Now, this one man goes into this city, and the entire city turns to God. This is just something that never happened before, as far as I know, and certainly Noah didn't have this kind of an experience. But this man Jonah did. Now, notice the reaction to it. The city turned to God, believed God, and the king sent out a decree. And in verse 9 of chapter 3, I begin reading. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil he said that he would do unto them and he did it not. Now we've come to what is probably the strongest statement of all about God repenting. What does it mean when it says in Scripture that God repented? Does God repent? Well, the word repentance in both the Old and New Testaments, in the Old Testament and the Septuagint, which is a Greek translation, and one of our better manuscripts, by the way, of the Old Testament, the word is metanoison. It means to change your mind. And the question arises, does God change his mind? What does it mean when it says that God repented? When one of the attributes of God is that he is immutable, that means God never changes. There's no reason for God to change. He knew the end from the beginning. And when this morning the Los Angeles Times came out, they didn't tell God a thing. May I say to you, God hasn't learned anything from our politicians and from our colleges today. They haven't taught God anything. God knew the end from the beginning. And there's no reason for God to change his mind because, after all, he's carrying on the program that he carries on and that he's outlined at the beginning, and he's just following through on it. Therefore, God does not change. But it says God repents. Now, will you listen for just a few moments? There are expressions used in the Word of God that are called anthropomorphic terms. That's a pretty big word. And this lady I read says, I teach simply. Well, I'm going to try to sort of break this word down and let's look at it. What does it mean when anthropomorphic terms are used in the Bible? Well, it means that there are certain attributes that belong to man that are ascribed to God. In the Bible, there are physical attributes and there are psychological attributes of man that are attributed to God. First of all, look at the physical attributes. It says in the Scripture that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in the earth. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean God's got eyes like I've got? And if he has, are they blue or brown or what are they? Gray? Well, may I say to you, God doesn't have eyes, physical eyes, like I have. God is a spirit, and therefore he doesn't have eyes like we have, but the one who made the eye can see, and he can see without the eye. So that that's a little difficult for me. And the Lord knew that Vernon McGee would have problem understanding so he said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in the earth. And I understand that now. That means God sees everything. And that is an anthropomorphic term, ascribing to God an attribute that belongs to man so we can understand. Now it speaks of the arm of the Lord and the hand of the Lord. And that is very helpful to me. But the one who made my hand, my arm, he doesn't have a hand and arm like I've got. God is a spirit. But it says that the heavens are his handiwork, and it really means finger work. And that tells me something. John Wesley put it like this. God created the heavens and the earth, and he didn't even half try. Well, friends, finger work, that's like a woman crocheting, like knitting. 
That doesn't require a great deal of muscle. You don't have to do setting up exercises for six months before you can learn to knit, my friends. Well, God created the heavens, the earth, and we told it's his finger work. But when you're talking about God's salvation, his redemption, Isaiah says, to whom is the bared arm of the Lord revealed? And I understand now what I wouldn't understand before, that it costs God more. And it was more difficult for him to redeem man than it was to create a universe. So these are anthropomorphic terms that are used. Now there's certain psychological terms. It speaks of the anger of the Lord. Does God get angry? He sure does. He says he's angry with the wicked all the time. May I say to you that God today can get angry, but his anger is not like mine. I get angry when I hear that somebody said something about me. That doesn't bother God at all. His is not peevish or petulant. God's anger is an anger that is against all wickedness and sin. And then God loves. And I understand that. And in fact, God takes very, very human relationships, the love of a man for a woman. And you'll find that told in the little book of Ruth. And you'll find God again and again. And the church is called the bride of Christ. That tells us something. It tells us something of the love of God. God loves you. And you couldn't keep him from loving you. But now, here's another one. God repents. Well, that means changes his mind. That's what it means when it applies to me. When I repent, it means that I've changed my mind. I did this wrong. Now I see it's wrong, and I turn from it. And I go to God and ask for forgiveness for it. I come over on God's side. And that's what it means to confess your sin. You come over and agree with God about it. Now, does God repent like that? Does he change his mind? He says, my, I made a mistake there. I shouldn't have destroyed Nineveh. No, there are two things to note here. And will you note them? The city of Nineveh had two options when this man, Jonah, entered the city. They could reject God's message. They could ignore it. They could pay no attention to it. And if they did, they would be destroyed. God never changed that. But they could accept God's message. They could turn to God, which they did, and God would deliver and save them. Because God is immutable. He never changes. When his word is rejected, when people turn from him, they're lost. And when they turn to him, he'll always save them regardless of who they are. May I say to you, therefore, who changed? Did God change? No, it looked like he did. Because Jonah said, why, in 40 days this city is going to be destroyed. God's going to destroy it. But God didn't destroy it. Did God break his word? No, sir. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that city had two options. If they didn't accept it, they had have been destroyed. But they accepted God's message. They believed God. They turned from their wickedness. And God didn't change. God always will save when people will turn to him. It looked like he did. And that is the way these poor pagan people there in the city of Nineveh. And unfortunately, we got a lot of poor pagans around today that like to criticize the Bible. When you come to this, they say, look, it says God repented. My friend, it did look like he repented, but it would pay you to study this and find out who really changed. God didn't change, but the city of Nineveh changed, and it made all the difference in the world.